Hey guys, welcome back to Master Room Gaming Studios. I'm Craig, and last week GW gave us the first changes to the Tierna Codex. They gave us the errata, which is hard changes put in. Most of them are clarifications on certain rules, uh, confusions, but there are some real rule changes in there. So today we're gonna do a quick video and dive through all of the changes and clarifications, give you my opinions on them. Uh, just wanna you know, update the community in case you guys didn't see this. It'll be pretty quick, There are, but there are some big things we do wanna talk about. So before we do dive in, do consider liking and subscribing to stay up to date on all of our content here at Maelstrom Gaming Studios. And if you wanna help support the channel, continue this growth. We are implementing new changes specifically to our battle reports, however, sneak peek. We got new cameras. You might have seen them on the last battle report. I have fixed some of the errors. So we've got camera one. Hello. Uh, camera two. You can see the dice cam, right? Yeah, you can see the dice cam. Uh, is it off? It's off. There it is. So I'm going to move this out of the way just so it's not in my way for filming today. And then we have this cam. Hello. It's just sitting on the ground over here, but we'll eventually move this camera, move it up, down, left, right, this one that we currently have, I'd like to be the free cam, just so you guys, we can, you know, show close-ups of the models or something, whatever the case may be. But eventually I would like one up in the ceiling too, uh, just to get some better, some better top down. However, we do need some more, we gotta, we gotta get some more money before we can buy a really nice top down camera, which I do want. In the meantime, thank you for everyone, our current members for supporting. If you wanna help support us, I just wanna show those off. Now, with all that out of the way, let's dive into today's video. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna cover, or the first set of things, are the changes, clarifications. They're not major, they're not gonna in impact how you build your armies, how things happen, but they're important things we should cover just in case. So the first one is the change to the overrun stratagem. Not a big deal. They have basically just reworded the last sentence. It now says if there are no enemy models with an engagement range at, of that unit, models in that unit may make a, more, a normal move. Basically what this is doing is there are some weird quirks with consolidating and stuff. They just made it nice, plain, simple there. So no major changes there. Uh, some data sheet fixes. The Tyranno site is truly a dedicated transport now. In the, the back where they show the point values, it was a dedicated transport. However, in the actual codex pages, it is listed as a heavy support, uh, just in some ways. Just GW messing up little minor things. It happens to everybody, but they clarified it there. Uh, they also rewrote a rule uh, I think people are trying to do a workaround saying the Tyranno site didn't have to be nine inches away from the enemy, but the units inside did. Uh, they rewrote the rule and that's the only reason I could try and figure out why they actually needed to rewrite it. They did, fixed, if that was a problem, but that's done. Uh, the next thing, zone throws, they have truly gained their keyword now, so of synapse, I should, I should clarify. They have keyword of synapse, so that's nice. And now for three other clarifications. Adaptive physiologies. There is a spot in the codex that said that it could be given to characters, just not named characters. They have clarified it that says characters, named characters, and titanic units cannot have adaptive physiologies. I really wish normal characters could have taken these or character monsters, let me clarify that too. Really wish, I think the Trigon Prime is really missing out on not being able to take these as well as the Turvagon. Uh, other than that, it's fine. I mean, the Hive Tyrants are already so good, they don't really need one of these. But the Trigon Prime and the Turvagon, are, I think they're really missing out uh, not taking these. So maybe a change in the future? Probably not, considering they just clarified it. And Titanics, of course. They, they'd be, it, it's bonkers when they could take them. Uh, they did clarify that Enraged Reserves does not work on the Maliceptor's Mortal Wound bonus bracket. Uh, when the Codex very first came out, I even said I thought that it might work on it, uh, just because it's, it's something that changes with wounds. 
they clarified that it didn't. I haven't been playing that it did since the first like two games just because I kind of, you know, it made sense that it didn't. So they've clarified that. No bonuses, no, no doubling your wounds for that bracket. And they have also clarified, this is a 40k wide rule change, I think, but they clarified that if you have any rule, like the Malceptor, Synaptic Imperative, that lets you do a psychic action and a psychic power, that psychic action does cast or does cost one of your castings. So if you have a if you can cast three powers and you have a rule like this, you can cast one psychic action and two powers, or all three powers, and that's pretty much it, or just no action. So big clarification. There there was no clear cut answer, really, even if you tried to argue rules as written or as intended, there was no clear cut answer in my opinion. So they made that change here and that cuts down a little bit on the Maliceptor's potential effectiveness going forward. Now let's get into some of the more important changes. That last one was kind of important, but more importantly are these ones. So first off, Leviathan Hive Nexus Psychic Power, it only works on core units, meaning that bonus imperative. So you can select a, an imperative from a non-core unit, obviously, but the unit that is gaining that bonus imperative can only be core. Um, so you really only be slapping that onto warriors and carnifexes and raveners now. Uh, I guess people were putting on some of the big bugs, keeping that invone alive for longer, but warriors, just more, more stuff to warriors really. So that's that. The stratagem powers of the hive mind now only works on characters. So no longer does it work on zoanthropes and no longer does it work on the Maliceptor, again, cutting down on the potential for the Maliceptor. Unfortunately, Zonthropes were caught in the crossfire. Well, it was, that is what it is. Another big one. Encircle the Prey. Totally re re rewrote the stratagem. Now it is done at the end of the movement phase. So less effective by a large margin. Uh, I really only see this being done on gargoyles now. Maybe a unit of Raveners that are just popping around the board, but I think gargoyles are the only thing in Circle of the Prey is gonna be used on going forward now. So unfortunate, uh, but that is what it is. It was really just a, an easy button for the Tyranids. Could really abuse that in more ways than I'm sure they even intended, but uh, changes there. Now you're gonna have to think a little bit harder going forward. Spore nodes, spore nodes was a nice change that I did not see coming. No longer do you have to put the, the objective marker for doing the spore node action in your opponent's deployment zone. It just has to be within six inches of your enemy's deployment zone and six inches away from your enemy or from any other marker, meaning six inches away from your opponent's deployment zone. Uh, actually, you know what I can do? Dice cam. So if this is your opponent's deployment zone edge, this is your deployment zone. Right here is where you could do it if this is six inches. Maybe that worked. Maybe that made sense. Did it? Maybe, who knows? Well, whatever. I have the options now to play with that. Uh, what else do we have? I, oh yeah, so that's, that's good for spore nodes. Uh, change a lot of people are not gonna like, I saw it come and I tried to warn people, is that no more double cannon on the hive tyrants. It just, there's no reason why they should have it with GW's history of going to the kit, what the kit has is what you can equip. Yes, I can see you putting this, them arguing the Stranglethorn and the Bar or the Stranglethorn and the Heavy Venom Cannon on at the same time, but it specifically says in the in there that they cannot be equipped with more than one of this or that. So that is no more double cannon going forward. Uh, some synapse changes, big change, didn't see this one coming either. Synapse is now an aura, huge. Now, the main thing, this has some pros and cons. There's a Whirler trait to increase our um, bubbles by three inches, I believe it's just three inches, meaning if you can increase your synapse aura to nine inches, that also means enemy models 
or units or special rules can now turn off Synapse. So if you walk in with a nine man block of warriors thinking, you know, they're not going to ever fail morale and they chop down four of them or five of them and turn off Synapse, now you got a decent chance of failing morale. So maybe warriors aren't the best option. Maybe you could say the unit that they are supporting. So look at Raveners and Warriors. Raveners in Synapse have a really low morale. It's a big downside to taking a unit of nine, but if you can keep them in Synapse, you don't have a big issue with this. However, your opponent turns off that, now losing two Raveners in a unit is already a decent chance to fail a morale check, regardless of the, well, re regardless of the size. So big change here. I'll have to be careful going forward. Um, did not see this one coming at all. So that's it. Those are the changes. Uh, we're expecting, I'm expecting probably within the next month to see a points update similar to how they put Admec and Drukari points out ahead of chapter approved just because they were terrorizing the meta. I definitely see some chapter approved changes coming going forward before probably within the next month. So this is just round one of changes of probably two, if not three, but probably two. Uh, just again, some wrap ups on what I think the key points are to take away from this. Encircle the Prey, huge, huge change. No longer have the easy button on our Hive Tyrants and Raveners. We do have Overrun, which is great and it still works for getting those units out of dodge if you need to, but you have to guarantee you kill what you go after. You can't just, you know, oh, I'll kill five out of six of them or whatever and pull away. No, you have to know you're gonna kill them or they're gonna be stuck there. So, and you only have one option now. Normally you could do overrun and you could do encircle the prey. Now you just have one, so gotta be careful there. Maliceptor gets a needed nerf. I still expect a point bump, but uh, 12 mortal wounds is now their max. Plus if you super smite, you could get some extras on top of that, so. No longer the 20 whatevers, it's just 12. It's a casting psychic scream. Okay, I lied. You could do more with a neural parasite if you roll really well, depending on the unit and stuff. Theoretically, you got smite, psychic scream, and another power. You're gonna get four mortal wounds from psychic scream and smite. Maybe you'll get six extra, so you're looking at 10 mortal wounds. Still enough to drop a tank, but it's not the 20 whatevers that you've got potentially going on before this. Uh, Spore nodes, I think is one of my, my favorite changes out of all of these. It is now so much easier to do. You don't have to risk getting your troop choices in your opponent's back line. You could do all of them in no man's land just on your opponent's half of the board, which is very easy to do. They can't turn it off, they can't stop it, they can't, well, they could kind of deny it, but not really. It's just, if you play it smart in your head, it's just like a much easier R&D. You're gonna have a lot of troop choices anyway. Uh, you get three turns, if you can do it three turns, and you can easily, in no man's land, fit three objective markers across the battlefield. You have one on an edge, you could have one on the other edge, and you could fit two in the middle. So you could easily do that without even getting to your opponent's deployment zone. Three turns, 12 points, that's what R&D is. You could go for a fourth turn and get technically 15 points because you can't go higher. Uh, and you're not limited to squad size. So you got one warrior or one termagant hanging around because he didn't die for whatever reason. He can do that objective or that secondary, get you a lot of points. Uh, unfortunate that the only downside, actually, no, it's not really downside at all. I say Raveners can't do it, but why are you doing it with your Raveners when they're now your damage dealers? Yeah, this is huge change. And I think armies are gonna look to be taking this secondary going forward using units of Gargoyles and Hormagons to get it done. So, and Warriors. So that's it. That's all we got for this video. Nice, quick, clean, trying to make these videos a little less rambly, a little more concise for you guys to get the, get the content out there. So let me know what you guys think. Think on cameras, think on changes. Are you upset at these changes? Are you happy? For me personally, I think it is a healthy change to Tyrion Codex. Uh, obviously here, 
at uh, Mousetrum Game Studios. I love my Tyranids. I am going to do everything I can to get you guys content to make Tyranids the best they can be. But I don't want Tyranids to be crushing every other army in the meta, playing on just another level of the stratosphere. I think I would much rather have a codex that is B tier, and teaching and learning how to play that as an S tier codex versus playing an S tier codex, playing the auto win list, and then teaching how to tone down the list in a way. Um, right now, I think the codex is, I said this at the very beginning when I was first breaking through, I think the codex is very balanced outside of a few Thing. I mean, you've got the Malice Scepter, which has already been reined in. You've got the Harpy, which has yet to be reined in, but hopefully gets reined in soon. Uh, the Hive Tyrants are still good, and some of the... And High Fleet Leviathan is still nasty. But outside of a few of these anomalies, which yet everyone can put together in a list and be abusive, outside of some of those, the rest of the Codex is really good. So... Hopefully GW gets it right and tones down some of our strong points, our abusive points, and gives us just a nice, fun, fluffy codex to play Tyrants with, which is what, which is what we want as Tyrant players. I mean, maybe some of you guys are meta chasing and playing Tyrants because they're hot. I think Tyrants are a great army to play fluffy. Uh, oh, and turn our tone our Gaunts down a point each, please. Gargoyles can stay at eight, but bring our Gaunts back down a little bit, uh, especially with Armor Contempt. So. That's it. I said I was going to stop the rambling. I have. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you next here at. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you next time here at Maelstrom Gaming Studios.